probably on vacation. So I know that after work. Um, but I'm grateful that we have uh, two of the people that have just come in to, today, just a moment. So we've got Scott in the back and Dennis. So we appreciate you guys. church, uh, there will be, and I always forget how to say it, but there will be uh, Strawberry Social, SS, um, so that's going to be coming right after church, uh, Sister Fran uh, will be um, uh, in charge of that, and again, that's basically uh, um, some baskets, is it baskets, or what exactly is it, sorry, I apologize. Biscuits strawberries. There we go. All right. And there will be contributions uh, that uh, will go forth, and, and uh, some of it will go back to the church. So we just want to make sure that we uh, uh, bless uh, those that um, uh, work hard in the harvest. Uh, and so we're thankful for Sister Fran for doing that. Amen? Amen. Amen. Um, I know that uh, some of you, I heard there was a storm here last night. Is that true? Okay. So, yeah. So, I mean, we've had some... Some weird and uh, funky weather these days, and uh, you know, I'm sure a lot of you have heard about uh, the weather in Barhaven, um, dealing with um, the tornado. Um, actually, uh, they said that there was two that came down, so EF two EF ones uh, sort of went through the path of both of them, all both of them in uh, the Barhaven area, and um, so we're thankful that you know, for, for what I've heard, that uh, there's only one major -ish, um, injury uh, individual and so even that you know they consider uh, minor in terms of you know their, their actual injury so we're thankful for that i know that there's a lot of uh, homes uh, um, somewhat uh, destroyed so you know close to 200 um, but, uh, lives were saved amen mm -hmm. and that's the most important thing because uh, we know that um, life is not guaranteed you know, each and every day that we live it, it's not guaranteed, right? And so we're grateful to rejoice when we can rejoice, um, such as uh, Gary and Laurel celebrating uh, their daughter uh, that got married last week, and we're grateful for that. Uh, grateful for birthdays. We've got two young ladies uh, to the to my right here um, that celebrated their birthdays. And unfortunately, you know, uh, there comes death, right? And so um, I know that Sister Tracy has a, a heavy heart today and uh, someone that was very close to her and Jennifer uh, being her stepdaughter um, that, you know, passed away very recently. So, you know, these, again, these things happen in life, you know, so we just got to live day by day, uh, being closer to God, loving God, uh, and just believing trust in, right, and just draw on yourself closer to God, so uh, these things are important in life, and as I said, we just got to live our life for Christ, amen? Amen. amen. Alright, so I think I've got most of the things out of the way, and so we're just going to jump into the Word, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. All right. Everybody's ready for a word? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Well, I've got a word that I believe uh, will bless you, but at least make you concentrate on the goodness of God and uh, allow your hearts uh, to open. So I pray that it does that. Uh, the word today is, who am I? Who am I? Praise the Lord. And let's stand up for a read. It's going to be short and sweet. Um, one verse. And it's Exodus chapter 3, verse 11. Exodus chapter 3, verse 11. And it reads, And Moses said unto God, Who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh, and that I should bring forth 
the children of Israel out of Egypt. Again, I'll repeat. And Moses said unto God, Who am I, that I should go unto Pharaoh, that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? Praise the Lord. Brother Eric, can I get you to pray for the service? Lord, we thank you for this time. We thank you that you have allowed us to continue that Terry has done us a solid year. Father, we, we just we love this new chance and we just believe that you are going to flourish it and we just ask that your word penetrate our hearts this morning. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right, you may be seated. that shortly so that we can all hear inside and out. Who wants to sing happy birthday to the birthday girls? <laughs> no, nobody? Happy birthday <laughs> to you. <laughs> happy birthday. <laughs> To you. May all your wishes come true. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Jesus' name. How old are. No. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Never you mind. <laughs> I know. Trace, I know. That's a new version. Never you mind. <laughs> all right, praise the Lord. All right, can you hear me? Amen. And actually, uh, I'll do it after. That everybody will remind me that we've got to give the tithes and offerings. Amen? We'll do it right after. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Who am I? Who am I? Said Moses. I believe most of us have asked that question to a friend or a close relative, and if not, certainly. We have asked that question to ourselves, who am I? The first time I remember asking that question to myself was in grade three. I was born and raised in England, and I came to Canada at the age of nine. My elementary school put me back a grade, not necessarily for my academic skills, but because I was extremely quiet. Quiet during their assessment of me, three people surrounding me, adults at that. And when I did speak, I stuttered or mumbled my words. I was put back a grade, and it didn't help that I came to school with an accent different than Canadians. It also didn't help that I was the only black kid in the school. Lord knows that I wanted to go back to England straight away, where all my cousins and relatives were, was, and so that my safe haven. And he knew that I didn't like the place. My mom knew that I didn't like this new place. At school, I was teased and I felt rejected and sometimes felt alone. And I remember, I remember asking God, and this was in grade three, I remember asking, who am I to you, God? I felt inadequate, I felt unimportant, I felt alone, and I felt belittled. When Moses said, who am I, it was about him feeling inadequate and unimportant and an ordinary man. Moses felt unqualified. Who am I? The real question was, why me? But the Lord God has his reasons, and he stated it earlier in verses 7 to 10 of Exodus chapter 3. Starting from verse 7, it says, And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt, 
and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters. For I know their sorrows, and I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians, and to bring them up out of the land unto a, a, a good land and a large, unto a land flowing with milk and honey, unto the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites, the Amorites and the Hethites, and the Hivites and the Jebusites. Now therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel is come unto me, and I have also seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppressed them. Come now therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, uh, my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. God wanted his people out of Egypt. God has a plan and a purpose for all of us. Whether you are appointed and or anointed, he has a specific ministry for each and every one of you. Amen? And yet Moses still did not see himself as the leader of this great exile. He thought nobody would believe that he spoke with God. And we see that in Exodus chapter 4, verse 1 to 17. And Moses answered and said, But behold, they will not believe me, nor hearken unto my voice. For they will say, The Lord hath not appeared unto thee. And the Lord said unto him, What is, what is that in thine hand? And he said, A rod. And he said, Cast it on the ground. And he cast it on the ground, and it became a serpent. And Moses fled from before it. And the Lord said unto Moses, Put forth thine hand, and take it by the tail. And he put forth his hand, and caught it, and it became a rod in his hand. That they may believe that the Lord God of their fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, hath appeared unto thee. And the Lord said, Furthermore unto him, Put now thine hand into thy bosom. And he put his hand into the bosom, and when he took it out, behold, his hand was leprous as snow. And he said, Put thine hand into thy bosom again. And he put his hand into the bosom again, and plucked it out of his bosom, and behold, it turned again as his other flesh. And it came to pass, if they will not believe thee, neither hearken to the voice of the first sign, that they will believe the voice of the latter sign. And it shall come to pass, if they will not believe also these two signs, Neither hearken unto thy voice, that thou shalt take of the water of the river, and pour it onto dry land. And the water which thou takest out of the river shall become blood upon the dry land. So here's three things that the Lord basically told him that he shall do, that the people would believe that he is the leader. And yet in verse 10 it says, and Moses said unto the Lord, O my Lord, I am not eloquent, neither heretofore, nor since thou hast spoken unto thy servant, but I am slow of speech and of a slow tongue. He was saying, I am not eloquent. He didn't have any um, trust in his, in his uh, self. And the Lord said unto him, who hath made mouth, man's mouth? Or who maketh the dumb, or the deaf, or the seeing, or the blind? Have not I, the Lord? Now therefore go, and I will be with thy mouth, and teach thee what thou shalt say. And he said, O Lord, send, I pray thee, by the hand of him whom thou wilt send. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses, and he said, Is not Aaron the Levite thy brother? I know that he can speak well, 
And also, behold, he cometh forth to meet thee, and when he seeth thee, he will be glad in his heart. And thou shalt speak unto him, and put words in his mouth, and I will be with thy mouth, and with his mouth, and will teach you what ye shall do. And he shall be thy spokesman unto the people, and he shall be, even he shall be to thee instead uh, of the mouth, and thou shalt be uh, to him instead of God. And thou shalt take the rod in thy hand, wherewith thou shalt do signs. Moses needed all of this to be done because he felt he wasn't the right person for the task at hand. Moses struggled with self-confidence. Many people feel the same way when they're faced with new challenges. They feel inadequate or inexperienced. Jeremiah was one of these people. He was appointed by God as a prophet to all the nations. But we see in Jeremiah's, in, we see Jeremiah's reluctance with a conversation he has with God in Jeremiah chapter 1. Everybody say, who am I? Who am I? Praise the Lord. Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 4 to 10. And it says, Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou comest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. And I ordained thee prophet unto the nations. Then said I, Lord God, Behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. But the Lord said unto him, Say not, I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee, and whatsoever I command thee thou shalt speak. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am thee, I am with thee to deliver thee, said the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my, my, your, my words in thy mouth. See, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down and to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. God was speaking to Jeremiah and assuring him that he can be the prophet God expects him to be to warn all the nations and kingdoms of the world about God's judgment for sin. Furthermore, God told him that he will be there always to protect him along the way. It's great to have a God that cares, amen? amen. It's great to have a God that believes in you, amen? amen? It's a great feeling to know who you are with God. God wants to to believe in you even if you try to stray away from him. Some people know who they are, but they still try to stray away or be a little sarcastic. In Genesis 4, 9, it says, And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? That's not the way God wants people to be. Nowadays, if you watch sports, in particular football and basketball players, and, some ex some, and to some extent uh, soccer players, you can see them use a new phrase that's out there, and they yell into the, uh, to the cameras, I'm him. It's a weird saying, but it's like, I'm him, I'm that person. To be him just means that you are a dominant player, that you are that you've done a dominant play. It could be a touchdown or an interception or a mesmerizing catch. In basketball, it could be a dunk or a steal or a winning shot. In soccer, if you watch the World Cup, it could be Mbappe for France or Messi for Argentina. I'm him is all about the utmost confidence, swagger, and bravado in oneself. I'm Him has been heard in rap songs, and the acronym stands for His, 
imperial majesty. I am him. I was actually watching the other day, I think a week ago, and I was watching, of all things, The Price is Right. Everybody remembers that show? And there was a gentleman that was on there, and he basically had to, uh, there was four items that they gave him, so like grocery items, and then there were four prices on the side. And so he had to take those four items and move them to the prices and make sure that they were in the right place. And what I remember is that, you know, the clock, they give them probably like, you know, 60 seconds. And this guy did it, you know, as soon as he went, you know, go, he took the items, boom, 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 put them in, they checked, all four of them he got right straight away within five seconds. And the thing that he did was like, I'm him, I'm him. You know, it's like, wow, it's really, you know, like branched out, you know? But I just remember, like, just his confidence, right? Like, he felt confident even in doing it. He was like, I'm him, I'm the guy. For me, I started to know that I was in part who I, or who I was. And this was, again, in grade three, that I believed in myself. As I got accustomed to my Canadian life, my friends nominated me to be class president. To this day, almost 48 years later, I still have that very person who nominated me as my best friend. I still remember the drawing that he made for me. So it was cut out on a Bristol board and, you know, the typical, you know, round circle face, nose that wasn't there, um, you know, um, smile, you know, again, no lips, just, you know, smile. I had more hair, I hope you can imagine. So he, you know, did the old curly hair kind of thing on top. But the, the picture, again, being the only black you know, student in the, in the school, in which, again, I just love the picture and we wish you know, that we had it, but all he did was basically he drew with a brown crayon just like lines across the face you know, to represent that I'm you know, a black person. And I, I remember I loved it then and I still, you know, thinking about it, you know, it's like, I loved it then, we just wish that you know, like it was still around, but this is how, you know, he perceived me and, and how we, uh, how he nominated me. And in that nomination, I had to prepare and present a one minute speech. Now I'd be lying to you if I remember the speech, if I don't, but I do remember I had to be, you know, not necessarily a stage, but in front of the class, right? And I do remember, you know, that if I, you know, would have said something, it would have been something to the extent of saying, okay mates, you know, this is what we should do. If you nominate me, yeah, then we're gonna have a great pitch outside. We'll make sure the teachers clean up the yard so that we can play a good soccer game, yeah? You'd love it. Plus, I'm gonna make sure at recess we get a packet of chips and some lollies, yeah? Vote for me. It would've been something like that, I'm sure. Anyhow, I share this all because of my friend having my back. He had, me, had my back at times when I felt inadequate and he made me feel adequate. I felt like I belonged. I had self-confidence and I knew who I was. I wasn't asking the question anymore, who am I? Funny enough, out of all the people in the Bible, there is one that surprisingly had to ask his closest friends, who am I? And that was Jesus. Let me first uh, give you the background, which is found in John, in chapter, sorry, in John chapter six, starting at verse one. John chapter six, one to 15. After these things, Jesus went over the sea of Galilee, which is the sea of Tiberias. And a great multitude followed him because they saw his miracles, which he did on them that were diseased. And Jesus went up into the mountain, and there he sat with his disciples. And the Passover, a feast of the Jews, was nigh. When Jesus then lifted up his eyes and saw a great company come unto him, he said unto Philip, Whence shall we buy bread? 
that these may eat. And this he said to prove him, for he himself knew what he would do. And Philip answered him, Two hundred penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one of them may take a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said unto him, There is a lad here which hath five daily loaves and two small fishes, but what are they among so many? And Jesus said, Make the men sit down. Now there was uh, much grass in the place. So the men sat down, in number about 5,000. And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed to the disciples, and the disciples to them that were sit, set down, and likewise of the fishes as much as they would. When they were filled, he said unto his disciples, Gather up the fragments that remain, that nothing be lost. Therefore they gathered them together and filled twelve baskets with the fragments of the five daily loaves, which remained over and above unto them that had eaten. And so this was the background. The background is that Jesus was a miracle working Jesus, that he delivered those, that he uh, healed those that were diseased, that Jesus did all these things, and yet he had to ask, who am I? And we see this in Matthew chapter 16, verse 13 to 16, when Jesus had some time in some fellowship just with the disciples. In verse 13 it says, When Jesus came into the coast of um, Caesarea Philippi, Philippi, Philippi uh, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Eliza, and some others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living, of the living. Amen? In other words, Jesus was saying, I'm him. I'm the one. Amen? He was saying, I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. I am the door. I am the good shepherd. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the vine. Jesus knew who he was, but he was testing it. That I am Shiloh. I am the savior. I am the Redeemer. Amen? I am Wonderful. I am Counselor. I am the Prince of Peace. I am the King of Kings. I am the Alpha. I am the Almighty. I am the Omega. I am the Lamb of God. I am the Bright and Morning Star. I am the Son of Man. I am the Son of the Living God. Amen? Amen. Praise God. He knew who he was. I know who I am. Do you know who you are? Have you thought about that? Who are you? Out of eight billion people that we have in this world, who are you? Not who are you trying to be, but who are you? It's important that we know who we are. I'll read again in Exodus chapter 10, uh, sorry, Exodus chapter 3, starting from verse 10. Come now, therefore, I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. And Moses said unto God, Who am I? 
that I should go unto Pharaoh, and that I should bring forth the children of Israel. The children of Israel out of Egypt. And he said, Certainly I will be with thee, and this shall be a token unto thee, that I have sent thee. When thou hast brought forth the people out of, Israel, out of Egypt, ye shall serve God unto this mountain. And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, and shall say unto them, The God of your fathers hath sent me unto you, and they shall say to me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? In verse 14, most important, it says, And God said to Moses, I am that I am. He said it again. God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am have sent unto, unto you. The Lord God of your fathers, I am the God of Abraham. I am the God of Isaac. I am the God of Jacob. I am Elohim. I am Yahweh. I am El Shaddai. I am Jehovah Jireh. Amen? This is who that we love. Which means that if that's who he is, then you are a child of God. Recognize that. That's who you are. You are a child of God. Each and every one of us. God loves and protects us. Amen? He is love. He is protection. He says, I am love. And we are a child of God. God has a purpose for each and every one of you. Whatever you're doing, whatever ministry that you may have, whatever things that you are trying to put in place, just think that you can do it because you are a child of God. Everybody says, I am a child of God. I am, I am a, child a child of God. God. Amen. We are a child of God because we are loved, we are blessed, and we are protected. I hope this is a message that you receive today that is uplifting to let you know that you are a child of God. Your homework today, I'm not going to read it in full today, but I want you to take home, obviously, this message, but take home your homework will be Psalms 139. One three, Psalms 139. Make sure that you read it this week. Don't leave it till Sunday. Make sure that you read it this week because it's going to let you know that you are a child of God. God knows who you are. He knows everything about you. Everything. Even the very hairs on your head are numbered. Amen? He knows everything about you. Psalms uh, 139 starts out, and I said I'm going to read the whole thing, but it just starts out by saying, you may not know me, but I know everything about you. I know when you sit down and when you rise up. I am familiar with all your ways. Familiar with all your ways. Why? Because you are a child of God. He knows who you are. So now you've got to know who you are. Amen? Amen? Amen. 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 That's the message for today. I just want to to encourage you, encourage you to know who you are, so that whenever you step forth in anything that you do, know that you're a child of God, amen, that knowing that you can touch people, knowing that you can walk into a store <coughs> and just out of anything, to speak to that problem, speak to that situation, that you can move any mountain, because you are a child of God. I know that as I said, there's situations where there's death. But know who you are, that you can minister to those who are suffering, knowing that they, uh, that the families, that they're, you know, could be grieving. But you can be that voice that gives them peace, 
because you are a child of God. If people need to be delivered, that you can deliver because we have been given authority and the power to do so, to put a hand on people for healing, for deliverance, whatever it may be. But it's because we are a child of God. Know that. Amen? Know that you can be healed. Healed in the name of Jesus because you are a child of God. Know that you too can uh, deliver miracles because you are a child of God. It's got to be here in spiritually, mentally, that it's got to be here to know who you are so that when you walk, you're walking in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Know that you are a child of God. Amen. Let's stand. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mighty God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Mighty God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Almighty God, for this message, O oh Lord God, today. Hallelujah. I pray, Almighty God, that those that were here today, Almighty God, those online, have ears to hear the word, Almighty God. That they know who they are, Almighty God. Hallelujah, Almighty God. Out of the many that you have chosen, you have chosen us here. To, you have chosen us to be here today. That the word, Almighty God, resonates, Almighty God, into our hearts, into our minds, O Lord God, into our spirits, O Lord God. Hallelujah. You are the I am. Hallelujah. The I am. Hallelujah. And that Lord Almighty God, we acknowledge you as the I am. Hallelujah. The Lord, you are our God. Hallelujah. You are Jehovah Jireh. Hallelujah. Lord Almighty God, you are in charge, Almighty God. And we're grateful for that, Almighty God. Be with your people today, Almighty God. Be with your children Hallelujah today, that they would know who they are, mighty God. Hallelujah, that they would know that they are healed. Hallelujah, in the name of Jesus, that they are blessed. Hallelujah, in the name of Jesus, almighty God. Hallelujah, that they have a ministry, hallelujah, before them. And that, Lord, you will step before them because you will be there as you were for Moses, as you were for Jeremiah, almighty God. You will be there, almighty God, for your people Hallelujah, in their ministries, almighty God. Hallelujah, in everything that they do, almighty God, I pray that, Lord, it shall be about you. Hallelujah, because, Lord, we, almighty God, are blessed. We are blessed, almighty God, because you are the Alpha, because you are the Omega. Hallelujah, because you are with us, O oh Lord. Hallelujah, from the time that we get up to the going down, almighty God, of our sleep, Lord of oh God, you are there. Hallelujah. We are your children, almighty God. Hallelujah. And that we ask, Lord, that you be with us, O Lord God, and protect us in our almighty God ministries, O Lord God, in our daily walks with you. Help us, O Lord God, to grow in the name of Jesus, almighty God. We are blessed, O Lord God. Hallelujah. Because of you, almighty God. Allow the spirit, allow your spirit, almighty God. Hallelujah. To just quench us, O Lord God. Hallelujah. Allow it, Almighty God, to be a part of our being. For, Lord, we are grateful, Almighty God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, Almighty God. Hallelujah. Bless those, of oh God, that came. Hallelujah. Give them a safe journey back home. I pray, Lord, Almighty God, that they would, oh, Lord God, take the heart, this word, and take, Lord, Almighty God, Psalms 139. I pray that that will be their scripture reading, Almighty God, this week to know who they are. Hallelujah, child of God. And we give thanks for it in Jesus' name. And everybody says, Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you again for being here. Appreciate each and every one of you. And right now, we're going to give you an offering.